Last year, Graveyard Cars was entrusted with one of the most iconic Mopar muscle cars to ever be assembled, the 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona. This real XX29 car is one of only 503 ever built. Not only did we inherit one of the coolest muscle cars of all time, but it also turned out that we inherited its owner, Tom Partridge. Back when the car first showed up, Tom had stopped by to share the story about the Daytona Charger and what it meant to him from all the way back when he was a kid. I always loved the wing cars. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't know what they were. I just thought they were a big, cool car with a big wing and I loved them so much that I was in this group with my dad called the Indian Guides and we built Pinewood Derby cars and I had him actually make me a Pinewood Derby car with a big wing on the back. And then a few years ago I was thumbing through the internet and typed in Project Daytona and this Daytona came up. No motor, no interior, you know, but it's got the wing, it's got the rear window and the rear window trim because I know those are, you know, extremely difficult, if not impossible to find. This was something I didn't want to lose. Today we have the 69 Charger Daytona on the rotisserie, loaded up on the trailer, and on its way south to Evelyn's Media Blasting in Roseburg. When we get it back, it'll be bare metal and we'll be ready to start replacing panels. My name is Curtis Eveland. I work for Eveland Sandblasting and Painting. We've been in business here in Roseburg, Oregon for 20 years. We do media blasting, sandblasting, painting services, just about anything that requires metal work, but we specialize in, in auto body restoration. The Daytona is back now, and we've got it inside the shop up on the correct rotisserie so we can start replacing panels. I'm rounding up the guys so we can get together, figure out exactly what parts need to be replaced, write down the part numbers so I can go in and order them. Okay, so the firewall looked to me like it was fine. Now that the Daytona is stripped, we can really see what all's wrong with it. Um, it's always one of the things that you bite your nails a little when you send something out to get stripped because so much paint, so much epoxy, sealers, primers, Bondo, all kinds of things mask the true condition of the metal. I'm gonna move it back over to the body shop so they can start drilling out all the spot welds and removing sheet metal. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, what's on the agenda? Happy? <sighs> Mark was sitting on the bin pack. He had a really worried look on his face, and it kind of made me worried too. So I, I didn't understand what was going on from the get-go. Who did it, and who covered it up? It happens. All I ask is if you make a mistake and you, do, and you damage something, just come tell me. I didn't do it. I know who did it, but I'm not gonna squeal on him. Well, okay? in my mind, there's no, I don't differentiate between a manager and his employees. If it happened on your watch, you're responsible. If anybody well, yeah, in the future could let me know they do something, I'll fix it. I'm well, okay, I've never beat you know. anybody up. I've never, I've never pummeled you, I've never gone to your house, you, know. you ordered the hair out of your dog. I, I, I don't do stuff like that. I wanna pay you back for what you did. If I just blow up and get it out of my system, that's not gonna help anything. You'll forget about it in two seconds. But if I methodically and systematically beat you down emotionally, and spiritually, and I tear you down to the very core of your being over the course of a day, you will remember the chip, the scratch, the nick, the lie, the tool left out in the rain far longer. Chips, chips, <laughs> that's you. From now on, you're responsible for it. Now Don't start the ruffles. hyena laughing. Now these are ruffles on the chips. <laughs> Let's move this rotisserie out. What did he call you Chips, dude? And put the right, nose buddy. cone on this thing. I need to get this done, too. Your nickname is Chips. <laughs> um, I want to get the nose mocked on that. And if we have time, I'd like to do the wing, too. So regardless of the damage that happened to the CUDA, uh, I still have a job to do. Our Daytona Charger is waiting to have the fenders and the quarter panels massaged out to shape. We need to have the nose cone and the spoiler hung on it in order to do that. So this is the original parts list, so we'll get to the wing here in a minute. I need, the fenders are already on, I'm not worried about the scoops right now. I'm gonna need the Z brackets. Turn stain, go grab the Z brackets. Gosh, who are you talking go to? Go grab the Z brackets. And, and I'll grab them. Um, hey, somebody grab these outer brackets here, we're gonna need the outer okay. brackets. Uh, chips, you go get the nose cone and bring it over and set it in place. It's actually kind of funny how Mark's treating Darren. He keeps calling him chips. You got the nuts and bolts? 
chips. Careful, chips, don't scratch your paint. I didn't even touch it. I think it really is getting a dairy in, and plus it's really not helping too that I'm laughing at it, because I think it's it's making Mark intensify his name calling. Hey Darren, what was your favorite TV show when you were growing up? Little was House it, on the Prairie. Was it is there a is there a <laughs> Just as we were wrapping up putting on the nose cone, uh, I asked Chips if he'd go to the back of the car and start making all the provisions so we could put the rear spoiler on. Chips, put that spoiler on. It's gonna take two people. You ever see that show Chips growing up? Can you Chips! Can you <laughs> this Let's get this done so we can go home. You guys gotta grow up, man. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, Thank we you gotta grow much. up. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, it's starting to actually look like a Daytona again. It wasn't but a few weeks ago. This car was just a shambles. There was nothing left but a couple of frame rails and floor section and, and roof. And now it's all actually starting to take real good shape. And uh, can't wait to send some pictures off to the owner. I think he's going to be pretty excited. So I decided to come out and surprise Mark and the guys to see how the car was. Totally didn't expect a client to fly 3,000 miles just to check up on his car, but it was actually nice to see him. I was hoping it would be painted by now, and I uh, was surprised that it wasn't, and I asked him, you know, what can we do to get it done, and he told me... Tom can help. So the first thing he had me do was take the front end apart, which he didn't let me finish because all of a sudden I hear swim cap. Then he pulls me off and he gives me a broom. I start sweeping and I hear moonhead. So then I get working in the trunk and I hear these murmurs of some other kind of lovely names that he decided to call me. Uncle Fester, Milky, yo. Yule Brenner. I really wanted to spend a couple of minutes uh, with Cue Ball to let him know that the uh, brackets that he sent out uh, by Rick Fairless are just amazing compared to the original ones. Uh, we've got everything mocked up on that. We've already fit all the headlight mm -hmm. doors. One of the things you were asking me, and, and I didn't know all the answers till we got this one apart, right. is what actually goes in there. That's kind of a mystery. What all goes in this huge, big nose cone besides headlights? This is not a safe car. <laughs> if you look here, you have these two huge Z brackets. Basically, that and this upper latch tray right. are what keep that nose cone from sliding all the way through the core support, firewall, and into the steering wheel. It, so today they got, what, 10 mile an hour right. crash bumpers or right. 15 mile an hour? No collapsible This bumper. is zero. I, I saw a video the other day, a guy was talking about the salesman back in the day. The nose stuck out so darn far on these cars that when the salesman would go to park them on the car lots, they'd bump into something and just waste the brand new right. steel front end on it. Yep. So, yep. so there's your safety absorption right there. <laughs> nice. It was great having Tom out to visit. Uh, he actually is a really hard worker and he helps out a lot. I know he was disappointed that his car hadn't gotten painted by the time he got here. So I'm gonna move some things around in the queue and see if we can start blowing some red on it by the end of the week. In the case of our R4 Daytona Charger, R4 is a solid red color. It doesn't have metallic in it. I learned years ago that the concept single stage, it wet sands and buffs better than the clear coat. It has a richer, deeper look to it. And as well as it saves a bunch of money because you don't have the base coat and the clear coat together. You just have one product, a single stage paint. So you save time and money, and in the end, the result is even better. I just know that the finished product is a lot better and a lot shinier if you use the single stage concept. The Daytona Charger decal is a gorgeous decal. Other than the 71 CUDA billboard, I would have to say the Daytona is the most difficult one to apply. The Daytona graphics kit has a few unique things to it that if you're not paying attention, you might not even notice. The A at the end is actually leaning to the right-hand side, which is, I think, a real cool characteristic. And a lot of the aftermarket ones don't have that in it. This one actually does, and that's factory. Just little key things that you need to make note of if you're working on one of these cars. All we have left on this week's agenda is to get the front and the rear suspension under our Daytona Charger. The clock's ticking, Tom's gonna be here soon, and all I'm hoping for is things go right. You got the lug nuts. Why don't you go pick up Tom at the airport? They're gonna be in any minute. Just go grab him real quick, bring him straight back here. 
Wow. There they are. Look at that. Tom showed up today with the family from New York in the Graveyard Cars van. I'm looking forward to visiting, hanging out, having a couple of dinners with them. Oh, nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? Revealing a car to a customer who's been waiting years to get it back or to be able to see some major progress on it is as fun for me as it is for them the first time they see it. 469 wow. Charger Daytona. <laughs> that's for, that's cool. Crazy. It looks so good. Can I touch it? I can't sure. Paint job on this. It's like candy. It looks wet. Wow. Last time that we saw the car, it was just, it didn't even roll. He pushed it home and it was a pile of junk. Now it's gorgeous. Who doesn't want to drive this? How would you like the honors of putting on the coolest piece? I really did say that right. because I know you've been talking about it forever. Mm -hmm. You interested in helping me put it on? Absolutely. <laughs> the girls did. Hey, line me up in those fronts. Roll over. I can't see everything. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Beauty oh, I think the wing just makes the car. The white wing and the white Daytona stripe really, really add to the car. It just makes the car totally. It's beautiful. So, when am I going to get to do my first burnout so people can call the police in my town and say there is a red car with a big white wing on the back doing a burnout? You want to know when your car is going to be done? When's it going to be done? One month. I think it's gonna be awesome when it's done. Hopefully it will be a month. If not, I'm gonna give him one of those Novocaines that he wants to give to everybody else. Novocaine! Towards the end of the week, I wanna get the motor and the transmission put in the Daytona. Uh, for real this time, last time that Tom was here, we kinda of mocked it up so it looked like a complete car just for him, for aesthetics. But now we wanna officially get it put in the car and ready to go. The motor and the transmission are hooked together. All of the suspension is on it. We're gonna lower the car down around it, get it raised up into place. Go on down, Rolo. Looking good. Might need to go to the passenger side, one half of one inch. Say it again. OK. That looks pretty good. OK. Once the car was lowered down and making contact with the K-member, we installed the K-member bolts and the transmission cross member and bolts. Just and the bolts. Up in there like butter, baby, like butter. Now that the K-member and the transmission are secured to the car, we can raise it up in the air, install the torsion bars, the torsion bar boots and clips, and preload the lower control arms. Seeing the motor and the transmission come together in the car for the first time in 30 years, and opening the hood and looking at it and seeing how beautiful everything is and how correct everything is, is very rewarding. But we are not out of the woods. There are still a ton of things that need to be hooked up, fastened together, interior needs to be put in, back glass. There's a slew of things. Now is not the time to rest. Now is the time to run. The Daytona has come a long way since it showed up here at Graveyard Cars, but it still has a ways to go before it's done. We gotta get the headliner, dash, interior, and the exhaust on before we can move to the next step. Absolutely no letdowns this week. The pressure is on. You see Chrome Dome's back from New York. The Daytona needs. Are you paying attention? One of the things that we're going to do first is have the upholstery guy out to install the headliner. That needs to go in before any other interior can go in the car. So the very first thing that's happening is Larry's going to come out from Larry's Interiors and install the very unique Fastback XX29 headliner. You know what that is, right? Yep. Uh, I want you guys to get all the rest of the pieces prepared, finished, treated for us to be able to install the dash. The headliners in these cars are crazy because remember, they've just extended that whole back, I don't know, eight inches, 10 inches. It's, it's now a long drawn out roof. So that means the headliner on the inside has to match it that far back. And that's a long, strange shape. It's got all kinds of hills and valleys in there. But when it all comes together and the headliner and the package tray and everything's in place, it's cool. It's really interesting when you start looking at how a car was assembled. Our mind tells us it was done a certain way, but the assembly line did it a different way. That's why we have the books from Dave Weiss. That's why we have all the reference material. In the case of like the Daytona's undercoating, it was hit and miss. It was splotched in here, splotched in there, and you have just a little pattern here and a little pattern over there. This gets a little light dusting of it on it, and this one doesn't. Just same thing like the primer and the fenders when they changed them from a 69 fender to a 70. There's a footprint of where those were, where the original fenders were. You have to duplicate that if you're going to be actually truly building a car back to assembly line. That's what we do. We look at reference pictures, we take our time, we try to emulate exactly the way it was done on the assembly line. The headliner has been installed in the Daytona and now we're ready to install the beautifully restored dash by Instrument Specialties.
There, there it is. There it is. <laughs> there we go. Houston, we have liftoff. Once D-Rock Chips and Thunderdome got the heater box installed, bolted up and married against the firewall with the insulation in place, all of the under dash provisions in place, we can now install the dash. With instrument specialties, what it allows us to do now is to take the dash assembly out as a complete unit and send it back to instrument specialties in the East Coast. Look at that. Oh my God. Wow, that's got. Oh my. Roll that up so I can peek at it. Oh. I'm glad that they're involved because it allows me to be able to focus on the a million other things that go into putting the car together. That's our first instrument specialties dash right there going in a Daytona Charger. Beautiful piece of work. Put the heater case right in there. Everything went just fine. Put the dash in. It looks great. It looks beautiful. Probably better than new. Yep. That right. looks good. That looks oh, fantastic. Really nice Absolutely. Job, better than new. Nice well, and it job. just changes the car instantly. Better Look at than it. new. The dash assembly is installed in the Daytona. Looks awesome, works perfect. Chrome Dome got all of the brake system working, got the system flushed out, that's up to par. Now we can move the Daytona back over to the bin pack and install our brand new accurate exhaust system. Okay, uh, Josh grabbed the radiator. Oh, what a beauty, huh? Well, now that we got our radiator and shroud all in place, we're going to open up all our accurate exhaust, take a look at it, and get ready to fit it under the car. Okay, so we start always start with putting your H pipe, your head pipe on. You got some hardware there? Yes, sir. This is a nice system. It goes right in place. Are you okay there, Mary? Oh. You need some help? No. You got the Why bolts? are you trying to put you it got through the there? Bolts? That, that's that's my point. That, exactly, is my point. You see them? The system is designed to go together. One guy, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And four guys in there. Only one of them with a brain. I'm not talking about you. The accurate exhaust system, I've said it before a dozen times, it is the best system we've ever used. It duplicates the original look. It duplicates the original sound. And if I didn't have the three guys that I had putting it together, it would have been done in 15 minutes. I think, you, I think Mark could take Josh. Oh, Darren. I'd like okay. to see your ass take can you grab that front one? I'd like to tighten up a little bit more. Sure thing. Okay, so that's it. Everything is lined up. The tips are pointing out the back straight. Once we run the engine a few times, uh, we'll probably go back through. Tom recommends putting a little tack weld at all the joints. We've done that in the past, uh, but you just want to make sure you don't have any rattles or anything before you do that. Otherwise, exhaust done. The Daytona needs to get done sooner than later. We have legendary interiors coming out to help install the seats and the door panels, as well as Mike from AMD is gonna pay us a visit. Well, I know you guys do restoration back at your shop, right? We do. You do some of your own we do, uh We do the body work. We don't actually restore cars. We do some of our own show cars, but for customers, we just do body work and, and supply them basically a foundation to work with. Mike Gray from Auto Metal Direct just showed up a little bit ago. I'm excited because we've been buying this part since the day they hung their shingle on the door. So I'm excited about walking around the cars with them, showing them what they look like actually installed both before body and paint and after body and paint. This car right here exists. <laughs> <laughs> without sacrificing another charger because of your sheet metal. And I get so. to see where some of it went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Forging the relationship we have with Auto Metal Direct is how we are able to do the awe-inspiring restoration work that we do every single day, that you see every single day. Well, I just wanted to thank you personally for, for, for sticking with a good well, company and making a good product that allows us to do from that to that. Well, we appreciate it, and you know, our goal is to make somebody able to restore a car to where you couldn't tell that it was restored. Yep. Ron showed up in the meantime from uh, Legendary. He is also here getting things prepped and ready for the install. Honestly, it is a bit of a sigh of a relief because this guy's done it since he was a kid, like I've done it since I was a kid, so we should be able to burn through it just in time to meet our deadline with Tom. So everything's absolutely awesome, um, but then the clouds, of course, have to open up and take a great big dookie on me. You know, I told you very clear and plain. Hey, hey, buddy. Bam, the clouds form overhead, the skies part, and there's Tom. Just like the prodigal son, except that they wanted the prodigal son to come home. I never wanted Tom. You know, we're capable of finishing it though, right? I know you're capable of finishing it, but I wanted to have a little hand in oh, finishing it myself. Oh my God. 
I got good news. Yes. Legendary's here. I see Ron's that. Ron's here from Legendary. What can I say about the Legendary interior? It's, it's as close as any human being on this planet could make to the exact same way they were made back in the day. So all we got left is get the thing plumbed out, get it fired up, get the brakes bled the rest of the way so it's safe for the highway. We can go out on a road test. Let's rock it. <laughs> Let's get all a right. night's sleep and rock Thanks. out of here. We're down to just the last few tune-up steps before this car gets to take its first flight in nearly 30 years. We made a lot of ground up yesterday on the Daytona, getting almost to the finish line. Came in nice and early this morning. So with them just buttoning up the last little things underneath it, uh, the two little things we got to do on the top, which is a spring and a bracket, that car right there is going to be on the road today, driving for the first time in probably 30 years. Today. I am not opposed to giving credit where credit is due, and every guy on this team today deserves credit. I think we're within a couple hours of getting this car actually done on the road and across the finish line. What more could a boss ask for? So we're going out for our first road test in 30 years? I know. Awesome, awesome. Dreamed about this since his inner kid. First, I haven't even sat in the car yet. Who's the dream maker, though? Tell him that. Tell You're yeah. the dream maker. Who made your dreams come true? You did. This is an exciting day for me, no doubt, but the only guy here it's more exciting for is Tom. I got the car warmed up and running. I got it up to operating temperature, and it's time to cut Tom loose and let him go have some fun. I'm not a huge fan of doing the big burnouts. I mean, I got all that out of my system as a kid, and I'm a little bit cautious when it comes to a new motor, but it's Tom's car, Tom wanted to do it, and what better way to break one in than to throw a couple hundred feet of cloud in the air. We've got a 1969 Charger Daytona on the road for the first time in 30 plus years, looking exactly the way it did, or possibly a little bit better, than it did on the assembly line in 1969. That's a win across the board. Thank You're you welcome, very, man. very much. It's been fun. It was hard to believe that, okay, this is my car. I look at the finished product and say, we just brought a dead car that some people may have written off already or would have written off in the future. We brought it back to life. So that car is now on the road, putting smiles on people's faces and reminding a lot of people who grew up during that era of some great memories. Nothing makes me happier to send somebody away than Tom. I See mean, ya. See ya. All right. Tommy's gone and there's gonna be a party. Hey, no, hey, no. Tommy's gone. Hey, everybody, Tom's gone. <laughs>